Hello, welcome back to Asian Cinema Season 2 and another Hirokazu Koreeda review. Uh, this one is for his 2017 film, The Third Murder. And this is kind of sold as Koreeda's courtroom drama movie, which seems very out of line with a lot of his recent work. And unfortunately, that's why Connie didn't join me for this one, because she doesn't like courtroom drama films. And as I found out in watching The Third Mur Murder, there is probably about 10 minutes of courtroom scenes. Um, it's not really a courtroom drama. It is, it is, but it, it doesn't really primarily take place in the courtrooms. It's all about the the kind of positioning of certain elements of a murder case um, to lead into this court court case. You know, it's, um, it's all the elements building up to it. And that to me is kind of infinitely more interesting uh, than being in a courtroom. But at the same time, I think the courtroom scenes are really well done and... Before I get too ahead of myself, let's actually talk about the uh, you know the plot of the film and where we're going. And I really want to kind of name check the cast here. Uh, our lead character is the lawyer who has been assigned with this murder case, and this is played by Masaharu Fukuyama. Uh, and the lawyer's character's name is Shigamori. I'll just call him the lawyer for kind of in case I'm butchering the name. And at the very beginning of the film, we open with a man hitting someone in the back of the head uh, in this kind of riverbank setting with a wrench and then he kills him and lights his body on fire. That's the beginning of the movie, The Third Murder. And the murderer uh, is played by Koji Yakusho, who was in the film Kyo uh, by Kiyoshi Kurosawa, who gave an incredible performance in that film. We talked about it uh, in Asian Cinema Season 2. Me and Connie reviewed that film. Uh, he's a great actor and to see him now like 20 years after Cure and he's still a great actor and he really brings a lot to this film. His character's name is Misumi and then we have uh, a young girl who kind of gets wrapped up into the story as well called Saki and she's played by Suzu Hirose who was in Our Little Sister uh, and also Masaharu uh, Fukuyama played the the more well-off father in Like Father Like Son. I believe that Fukuyama is a more of a, a, a popular singer than he is an actor and so whenever he gets cast in one of these films that there's a lot of eyes on it and stuff and you know i just think that the the two characters here shigamori and uh um misumi you know it's really well represented in this booklet cover because it's it's really about these two guys and it's a really interesting uh almost anti character study in a sense uh so the film begins with this murder and um, Misumi just kind of confesses. He says, yep, I did it. I killed this guy. So uh, Shigamori, the lawyer, he comes in and he's been tasked to defend him in, in court. They're like, he's confessed. So it's the job of this lawyer to kind of get Misumi's sentence lowered. And this is why when I was watching the film, I was thinking, oh, this is really grimy. Like he's, he's trying to help a murderer. I don't like this. You know, is that all the film's going to be? Or is there going to be some leeway with his character, with the lawyer's character here? Is he going to feel some semblance of kind of guilt or remorse or any kind of, you know, empathy for the family? And at the beginning, it seems like not because he they ask uh, Misumi to write an apologetic letter to the family of the man that he killed. He does so and they give it to the family and the woman, rightfully so, the wife of, you know, the, her husband's just been killed and the murderer sends her a letter apologizing. She rips it up and throws it back in the lawyer's face, as you would do. And the lawyer's like, what's wrong with her, you know? And you're like, wow. So from the get-go, this lawyer character, who is essentially our main character, is not a very likable person. You know, his job is to just do his job. He doesn't really care about the morality of it. And so he's trying to get the, the sentence lowered. I forget the order, but I think the sentence was meant to be murder and theft because Masumi also stole the wallet of this man, who was his boss, by the way. So he killed his boss and stole his wallet. And they're trying to make the case that the stealing of the wallet wasn't premeditated. It wasn't like he was planning to steal this wallet. It just happened after the fact. And so it's, it's burglary, not theft, or the other way around, which would then give him life in prison, not the death sentence. It's all about escaping Misumi from, you know, or get, getting Misumi to escape the death sentence. And so the lawyer is going around speaking to people and trying to kind of figure this out and finding a way to kind of, you know, nudge this case open a little bit and give Misumi, um, you know, his life in a sense. 
So why do we as an audience care about a murderer getting off lighter than he should? That was the thing at the first half hour of the film. I was thinking, where is this going? Because I don't empathize with anyone in this story, except for Saki, who comes in and she is the daughter of the man who was killed. And they see her at the riverbank and she slowly becomes ingratiated into the story. And we learn a lot of things about her. And uh, Suzu Hirose gives a very good performance, a very restrained performance that I think just heightens the mystery of her character and, and what her place in the story is. And then we have, of course, and I forget his name, but the actor who plays Masumi, uh, Koji Yakusho. Who he, he is a great actor. And what is so interesting about Masumi's character is that he confesses to murder at the beginning. But every time he tells the story of how he killed his boss, he changes his story. It's always different. And they're trying to figure him out. And there's loads of scenes where they're sat behind a glass window and he comes in, he sits down, he's very polite, he has a smile on his face and he tells them a different story. And and they're like, you know, why did you do this? And then it comes out that, well, I did it because my boss's wife paid me money to kill him. Now it's like, okay, so this is, this is not a kind of random murder. This isn't a murder of, I wanted to kill my boss. It's I needed the money or I was pressured into it by his wife and this, and now she's an accomplice. And then all these other different like theories start coming out. And now you're thinking as an audience member, what is the truth? And you're trying to discern the truth from all the kind of pieces you've been given so far. And it becomes a minefield. Now you're in the zone of the lawyer. And what I loved about the film is that the lawyer, Shigamori, he begins to get wrapped up in this case and he begins to get so invested that by the end of the film, he wants to believe that Masumi didn't do it, and he wants to help him get off. Not completely. I mean, there's there's a point where he's involved to the point where... I mean, actually, no. Apparently, there is no evidence. There is no physical evidence. It's all in the confession. And I don't know if this is a commentary on the, the Japanese uh, legal system or not, but there is a moment where... He changes his testimony, his confession, and the judge is kind of like, well, we should really do a retrial because he this changes everything. But, you know, we're here now, you know. It, it, it's really rough. And I don't know if this is the case. It might be where sometimes the course of justice is perverted by different interests, right? And... Ultimately, this film doesn't really give you an answer. And that's a really intriguing concept for a film like this because we have the opening scene that shows us Masumi murdering his boss. It's plain and simple, you know? And yet, did he do it? You know, at one point he says he doesn't. At one point he says he does. And there's a point where you see the murder from a different perspective and another character doing it. Does that mean that's the truth? Or is that what the lawyer is imagining? You know, because we, we, we delve into those realms where the lawyer is getting, Shigamori is getting so wrapped up in it that he's thinking things through, he's thinking different avenues. And is that him thinking it or is that us seeing the truth? And it's it's up to you to decide in a way or it's up to you to, you know, think what you want. And I feel like it's a mystery box that can never really truly be solved. And that's kind of the point, Right. And that's just really intriguing to me. And I can see why this is disappointing to some people I've seen on Letterboxd. That's usually my the way that I gauge a film uh, in terms of like wanting to know what other people think. I don't go to IMDb's score. I don't go to Rotten Tomatoes. I go to Letterboxd. Just regular Joes, regular people. What do they think of this film? And it's very middling. Very, mm, no, nah, this ain't it, you know. And it, it is an interesting kind of footnote almost, this film, in Corriere's 2010's output. You know, from 2011 to you know now, he has made almost exclusively kind of family drama movies that have been all excellent. And this is something that's very different. It's much grimmer in tone. It's it's a you know it's a much different story, much different feel. And I love that. I love that he decided to take a stab at something different. And you know, 2011 he did I Wish, which is a very charming film about two young brothers. Then we have Like Father, Like Son, which is about families and blood and what makes us family. Then we have Our Little Sister, which is, again, does blood make family? And it's a very sweet and moving family tale. After the Storm is about a father and a son. And then you have this. 
which is about a murder and uh, a lawyer with, who doesn't seem to have a conscience learning to, and, and growing to have this conscience and being utterly rattled by how he is invested in this man's case and wanting to believe that maybe he didn't actually commit this murder and maybe I can help him. And then you move to 2018 with Shoplifters, which is another film about family and does blood make family. So this film, The Third Murder, is very much at odds with Corriere's 2010s work throughout this past decade. But I like that about it. I like that it's kind of the, I think it's the diamond in the rough. I think it's a really great film. It's a very slow film and it's it's very cold, actually. I think that's why people struggle with it, because it's it's so opposing to the warmth that you feel from the majority of his films over the past 10 years. I think it's a very different feel and flavor. But to me, that just made it a bit more interesting. And there is a scene towards the end when Shigamori and Misumi have this kind of meeting. Uh, usually there's like three lawyers. There's our main character, Shigamori. Then there's a slightly older lawyer who has more experience and a younger lawyer. So you get those kind of three generations, and I, I liked all the side characters in the film too. There's some very good acting going on. But then you just have Shigamori and Misumi face to face. And at one point, you're literally seeing the reflection kind of, their faces are overlapping each other very slightly as they're locked in this intense kind of conversation. And it's about the, the truth. You know, there's been so many different pieces of the of the story that Misumi has given to these people and, and this lawyer in particular and Shigamori is just like just just tell me the truth just give me the truth I need the truth I just want to know at this point and he's he's moved as he's saying this like he's so wrapped up in it he's like almost getting upset over this thing and Misumi you know gives his response and it's it's a wonderful piece of acting between both of them and I, I would like to dig into more of it and go into spoiler territory, but what he says, the way the lawyer reacts, I mean, it, it's just dynamite filmmaking, I think. It's, or acting, I should say. But kind of drawing that performance out and the way that it is shown through through the, the window and the kind of the reflection shot is just, that's the highlight of the film, is the reflection shot with Misumi and then the reflection of Shigamori's face like kind of overlapping his. And you see these two men's minds are really just kind of, they're almost becoming one, that there's such a connection between them that has kind of grown almost, you know, outside of Shigamori's will. But he has found himself so drawn into this. And then there's also Saki and how she plays into everything. And there's a lot to dig into and discuss, but I'm going to leave it there because I don't want to spoil anything. And, you know, the way that the film ends is just kind of one of those well, what do you think? You know, kind of turns the camera around back on you, like, what do you think? So that is a frustrating way to kind of round off a story like this where it's all about searching for answers. But I think the central theme of this guy, this lawyer who, again, started the film with, seemingly without a conscience. I don't want to say that. It's not like he was completely heartless, but he'd, he'd become so into the routine of just defending people who have probably committed murder or very bad things and defending them. And he, he kind of, I guess, built up a wall around himself where he learned not to care too much about the morality of that. And in this case, he just could not escape becoming involved. He could not escape feeling something for this case and for the people involved and maybe wanting to believe that there was, there was more good to the story than bad. Um, but then in, in the case of, you know, if Misumi didn't commit this murder, who did? And if we know who that character is, what does that mean for the story? What does that mean for this case? And a lot of those answers aren't really given to you. And so, you know, you have to kind of reconcile that at the end. But I think that the the journey of it and the, the intrigue of it kept me going, you know, way to, until the, the very end of the film. I think it's a two-hour movie. And, you know, I was all right with the lack of concrete resolution. It's one of those films where it felt appropriate. And there are these cases where you don't get that concrete resolution in, in, a, in a case. You know, you get maybe a half-truth that ends up... You, and again, the, the judge and, and kind of just saying, well, let's just tie it up here, you know. Might not be the case, but, you know, we've got, a, we've got a, we've got a bigger fish to fry, you know. It would look bad on my reputation as a judge if I, you know, did a retrial. So we'll just t tie a bow in it here and we'll say, yeah, you know, that's that done, you know. Let's not look at this new information. Let's not let's not believe this person because uh, you know it's not in fit. It's not fitting with kind of you know the way things have been going so far. 
Uh, and that's another question. How much can you take someone on their word or not? And when they continually change their word, how do you trust them? And does the lawyer trust Masumi? Or does he just want to trust him for his own reasons? Yeah, there's a lot of ways you can look at this. And that's what I really love. There's a lot of depth to it. So that's my thoughts on the third murder. I, I love this film. I think it's 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 nowhere near as good as it has his other films because they have lots of great performances in them. But uh, And also kind of there's more of a warmth to them that makes it more enjoyable to watch. The coldness of this, I think, is appropriate to the characters. There is an inherent coldness to Misumi because there is kind of a previous past to him where he did kill someone some 30 years previous and he has an estranged relationship with his daughter. And I did love how Saki came into the film. I don't want to talk about her really at all because that kind of goes into other things that kind of are quite dark and also, you know, would spoil things, I think. But uh, yeah, so there, there's a coldness to Misumi. And there's a coldness to Shigamori the lawyer as well, but I love how that coldness was kind of chipped away throughout the film, but you're still left with the, the notion that, did he really change? Did he really open up? Did he really feel the morality of these cases and these people he's defending? Or did he just want to believe in it? Did he just want to empathize for to make himself feel better, you know? So there's, it's a triple, quadruple edged kind of, you know, sort of sword, I think, where there's lots of different ways you can view where the characters are, what they're feeling, what they're thinking, and where they ultimately end up by the end of the film. And that, to me, just makes an interesting story that I'll probably want to revisit quite a few times. And if you've seen the film, please let me know what you thought of it down below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, you're all right by me. <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans and calling into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. But he's not quite as cool as you. Cause...